Welcome to Embrace the Shift, Real Conversation, Real Topics for Women Over 40. Please welcome your host, Carrie Ann Munstead. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to our June Embrace the Shift. We've been doing this for three months now. <laughs> so this online gathering for women was created to address things that happen to us as we age, right? It's going to happen. Our bodies change and there are just really unique things that happen to our bodies after we get over 40. But not only our bodies, our a lot of other things change for us, right? Like we shift in our thoughts and our perceptions and our desires and our wants. Life circumstances shift as well. So let's not ignore it. Let's not wish it away, right? Let's embrace it. Let's embrace it all. Let's embrace the shift. So today's shift that we're talking about is around hormones and specifically how to understand your hormones, uh, how to ask the right questions and how to advocate for yourself. During our one hour agenda today, we're going to follow the real format, R-E-A-L. So we're going to start with the R, a relatable share, and we're going to hear a story from a woman who was impacted by this topic this month. Then we're going to move on to the E, the expert segment. And so this is where we have an invited guest, and today that guest is Megan Feldman. I'll introduce her more in a minute. Uh, and then we are going to go into our A, our authentic conversations, where you go into breakout rooms. And then followed by the L, living it out in your life. So Megan's going to come on with some tips for how you can apply everything that we've learned today into your life right away. <clears throat> so before we go on, I want to take a moment and really set the energy, right? This is meant to be a safe space where we're all welcome to be authentic and vulnerable. It's a place where there's no judgment and we really hold compassion for one another. So I invite you today to put away distractions, put away the cell phone, turn off Facebook for a while. I invite you to turn your videos on so you can show up not only for others, but for yourself as well. And I ask that we keep everything confidential. We will be recording this, but you know, this is a really safe space. So if we could just keep it to ourselves, that would be amazing. So if I could please get some thumbs up from everybody in the audience, if you are willing to, to set this energy with me today, wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. So it is now my pleasure to introduce the two women who will be sharing with us today. So first we have Nicole Thompson Hale, who is here offering her story for the relatable share. She is the owner of an HOA management company and an amazing personal wardrobe stylist. Some of you might know her as she styled many women for my Embrace Your Beauty project um, where we're celebrating fierce and fabulous women over the age of 40. Nicole herself was a participant last year and will be a participant this year as well. And all the photos that you have just seen were taken as part of Nicole's project. So welcome, Nicole. Thank you. Next, we have Megan Feldman, CEO of Trivita Functional Medicine. And I hope I said that right, Megan. <laughs> Awesome. So she's joining us today from Colorado, and she'll be our expert. So years ago, Megan created a proposal that won her company a dream project, building a city from scratch. The island is now one of the premier destinations in the Middle East. And Megan realized that even though she was a grain of sand in the project, her impact, her her actions impacted the world. So inspired, Megan left her career in construction to create an even bigger impact in people's lives. Around the same time, Megan met Corey. And on their first date, he told her about his idea for Trivita and a functional medicine practice. She knew the world needed his passion, drive, and help and jumped at the chance to support him. In 2016, Megan discovered her own health struggles with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. 
After many frustrating appointments with traditional providers, Megan made it her mission to help other people find a voice in their own health journey. So welcome, Megan. Thank you so much for being here today. All right, so Nicole, go ahead and take yourself off mute. And what's a brief summary of your experiences with hormones and what questions do you have here today for Megan? So um, within the pandemic, uh, being home and not having sort of like the rat race, you know, to keep up with, I started paying more attention to myself and realized that I had super low energy. Um, I had, which was coupled with low motivation. I, my hair was thinning just a little bit. And I, I mean, these are things I hadn't even taken the time to notice. And so I um, also was consuming a lot of social media at that time. And so there was an influencer, a local one on Instagram who was expressing similar situation. And she was talking about um, getting her hormones tested. And so I had spoken to my um, gynecologist about getting hormones tested and found out that their level of testing was not what I needed. I needed something deeper. So I got my uh, blood work done and found out through um, the blood work that I have a, some a, a particular food sensitivity and also um, I'm in adrenal fatigue. And so things aren't working the way they should be working. And that was a year ago. And I unfortunately still feel the same. And so for me, um, not understanding how much of kind of my, um, I guess, personality and, and you know, motivation is sort of dictated or controlled by hormones. I didn't realize how much it, it's been affecting my day-to-day -day life because I wasn't originally paying attention, you know, or to how long I was feeling that way. And now that I'm aware, I, I don't exactly know what to do about it. So that's it. So wonderful. So did you, did you ask your specific questions of Megan? Not yet. Okay. Sorry. So I've written. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> like, uh, um, okay. So for me, so I know that, so the first one is I know I'm in adrenal fatigue and I'm trying to figure out how to get out of that. And secondly, I want to know if food sensitivities or food allergies can actually affect the way our hormones work or the way the glands that produce the hormones work. And if so, what can I do about that? Because I found out that I'm sensitive to gluten. I am not celiac. I don't get violently ill, but I do have reactions. And I know now I'm realizing some inflammation. And so I want to understand how that also affects my hormones. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole. So we're going to have Megan come off uh, mute now, and she's going to teach us all about hormones. And in between that, she's going to answer Nicole's questions as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Carrie Ann, Nicole, I love your questions. I'm super excited um, to dive into them. I have so much information to share. I don't even know if I'll be able to share it all, but um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys all tonight. So thanks so much for having me. And um, I'll give a little background on functional medicine first. I don't know how many uh, women in the room know what functional medicine is. If you do, raise your hand. Let me know. Perfect. We've got a few of you. Wonderful. Um, so functional medicine um, really is an act of getting to the root cause of an issue. So in traditional medicine, oftentimes we will have a symptom that we try to treat with a medication. Um, sometimes that medication can help in the form of an antibiotic. If you have a bacterial infection, hopefully that antibiotic would get rid of the infection. But most of the time, the medications that we take are really just band-aids. They don't actually heal the problem within our body. So a prime example of this is like high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, you take a blood pressure medicine, it's going to bring that blood pressure down, but it's not going to necessarily fix the blood pressure. If you stop taking that medication, the blood pressure is going to go back up. So functional medicine seeks to understand why that blood pressure went up in the first place. Why is that really happening? And if we understand why that's happening, we can actually go in and start to fix some of the problems along the way. Now, a really common term in functional medicine is getting to the root cause. Um, the one root cause, I often say there's multiple root causes. There's never one smoking gun in our body that is the cause for all of our issues. There's multiple different things. So we really strive to put all of those things together. Um, we say it's build, building a puzzle. These are all puzzle pieces, the symptoms that you have, um, the test results that you get back, your lifestyle, all of those are puzzle pieces that have to ultimately fit together for you individually 
um, in order to really get better and start to heal those things. So when it comes to hormones, hormones are a huge major part of our body. Now, I don't know about you, but before I got into this industry in this field, I just thought hormones were about periods and puberty and menopause and maybe pregnancy. That was really all I thought about, right? I didn't think about hormones as a whole. I didn't really understand hormones, but now like hormones are such a robust part of our system. Truly hormones are communicators in our body. It's like our body's telephone system. So the best way I can equate this to something that we deal with on a daily basis that's pretty frustrating, think of our hormones as like our telephone system. So it's like talking on a cell phone and having a really bad signal. How many of you get frustrated, like whether it's distortion or you can't hear the other person? I don't know about you, but I hang up the phone and send a text message. I don't have time to wait around for somebody to get back on the phone, right? Like we, we have way too much technology <laughs> these days to just sit and wait for the, that thing to clear up. Well, that's essentially what our, our hormones are dealing with, but they don't have text messaging. They can't hang up and send a text message. They're just sitting there. It's kind of like going back to the 80s before we even had voicemails. Remember when you had to call somebody and they actually had to be there to pick up the phone? Like how frustrating was that? Yes, I do remember. I'm 39. <laughs> I do remember that time when we had to wait for people to be on the other end of the phone. So it's all about that communication and improving that communication. I think the other thing that we think about when we talk about hormones is we think about our sex hormones. We think about estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. Those are the common ones that we talk about. But Nicole's question is perfect. She's talking about her adrenal glands, which is related to cortisol, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more tonight. But so often I think we default to those sex hormones. We typically talk about hormones in relation to libido, um, energy levels, um, periods, menstrual cycles, um, menopause, perimenopause, postmenopause, all of those things. And yes, those are all absolutely hormonal functions that we have to think about, but there's so many other things that our hormones do in our body. So the human body has about 50 major hormones. Um, we have our androgen and estrogen hormones, or our quote unquote sex hormones. Um, thyroid is another big hormonal system. Um, our adrenal glands are hormonal, um, produce cortisol, which is a hormone. Then you have things like um, adrenaline is a hormone, Insulin is a hormone. I don't know if anybody knew this, but insulin is a hormone in our body. Most people don't know that. That's a pretty common one that most people don't know. The other thing that acts like a hormone, it's not technically a hormone, but it acts just like a hormone is vitamin D. So you hear people talking, vitamin D is a big conversation these days of how important it is to have vitamin D. That's because it acts like a hormone. It's a communicator within our body. So we have all these hormones that are constantly sending signals throughout our body. And they're taking messages from our brain, our glands, into our joints, tendons, organs, skin, all over the place. And their job is to just deliver messages. But if our hormones are out of balance, it's like that cell phone where we don't have a good signal, we're not communicating effectively, and things are not working. And so one of the biggest things that I'm super passionate about and I get really in on my soapbox about is being an advocate for yourself and your hormones. Much like Nicole said, she went to her OBGYN, she asked for some hormonal testing, and she realized it wasn't the depth of testing that she was really needing. It was really surface level, it was really basic, and I think that happens a lot within our traditional medical practices. And so my big passion and my big thing that I love women to learn about is hormones and to go and ask for the things that we need because there's so many answers that we can get for our body when we start asking the right questions. So that's why I said earlier, I really want to encourage you guys to be an advocate for yourself, just like Nicole was when she went in and got more testing. She had to be an advocate to say, okay, this testing isn't enough for me. This isn't gonna give me the answers that I need. I need more. And sometimes you can get your traditional medical providers to support you in that. And um, I'll give you a little bit of a, um, a list later of tests that we recommend. Um, but sometimes you also need to seek out alternative practitioners, whether they're concierge providers, direct primary care providers, or functional and integrative providers um, that are used to running these tests. The other thing that's really important when you're starting to run these tests is finding people that actually know what to do with them. It's so funny. Oh, perfect, a naturopath. Yes, that's awesome, Nicole. Um, naturopaths are amazing. I love naturopathic doctors. 
Um, the other thing that's really interesting, and this sometimes blows my mind because I am in health and um, I'm pr currently pregnant. I'm 25 weeks pregnant myself, so I'm going to, I have both traditional doctors and functional, a functional world that I'm in the middle of. Um, but it shocks me how few doctors really recognize some of the big things that we've learned from a functional perspective when it comes to hormones. Now, for me personally, I was not blessed to have an easy uh, time getting pregnant, and so I had to go through the IVF journey. I'm really lucky that we were successful in that. But that came with a lot of conversations about hormones and a lot of control of my hormones in order to get me pregnant. Now, I was really thankful that we were able to do that, and I appreciated science in that moment. But ultimately speaking, understanding our hormones is really, really important um, as how our body functions. So let's talk about our androgen and estrogen hormones, which are our quote unquote sex hormones, okay? So we typically say estrogen, testosterone, progesterone are the three that we talk about. If you go in and get tested from your traditional doctor, they'll probably run an estradiol. They'll maybe run a testosterone, maybe a progesterone. That one's a little bit iffy. Um, and they might do, depending on your age, they may be willing to do an FSH and LH. FSH is a follicle stimulating hormone, LH is luteinizing hormone. Those are typically when they're looking at whether or not you're perimenopausal or postmenopausal, FSH and LH are the two that can kind of tell them where you're at in that process. So those tend to get run. Now, if you're at the stage of wanting to have a child or starting to have it or starting to think about starting a family, those are also important from a pregnancy perspective. Now, that's like three out of probably 15 major hormones that I would recommend. So there's a huge cascade of hormones that really control the production. So all of our hormones are connected and they convert into each other. And that's why it's so important to understand the balance. So our sex hormones start out as cholesterol. Did anybody in here know that hormones started out as cholesterol? No, right? That was news to me too. I was so fascinated by that. What do you think happens when we are on a cholesterol controlling medication, like a statin? What do you think happens to our hormones? Yeah, absolutely, perfect. So not that I have, I don't want anybody to have a heart attack if we have cholesterol issues, absolutely. Consult your doctor, be on medication. But understand that that is going to also impact your hormones, impact your sex hormones. So, so often we are making these decisions for our health because that's what we need to do, but we're not thinking about all the other things that come along with the impacts of those medications. So it starts out as cholesterol, then it goes into something called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone then converts into DHEA. DHEA converts into testosterone and progesterone. And then testosterone converts into estradiol, which converts into estrone and estriol. Now, those are a lot of words that you don't really need to know. <laughs> Very big words, but I'm going to give you a little example of why all of that matters later. Um, but the fact of the matter is they are all connected to each other. So oftentimes when we hear people who have PCOS, for example, polycystic ovarian syndrome, they have high levels of testosterone. Their body has higher levels of testosterone. Testosterone converts into estrogen. So oftentimes they also have higher levels of estrogen. Now, most people don't, impact, don't look at the estrogen levels. They're only looking at those testosterone levels. The common medication for PCOS uh, outside of birth control, which is controlling the hormones or stopping the hormones from being produced, um, is something called spironolactin, which is a testosterone blocker. Well, what we're doing when we're blocking our testosterone, we're also blocking our estrogen. So that can impact that whole chain of how our body functions. Now, why is estrogen important? Well, estrogen helps us with a lot of energy. Um, it's really important to have a balanced estrogen and progesterone. Those are really critical things. But also testosterone has a lot to do with our libido. So when we're starting to talk about things like um, uh, low libido or vaginal dryness or pain during sex or all of these things, it comes down to hormones and really looking at how those hormones are being impacted in our body. And you have to look at the whole picture because if you're only looking at a couple of different snippets, you're not gonna really truly understand what's going on, okay? Because if you're only looking at estradiol, that's not telling us how our testosterone is producing. And yes, 
women, we need testosterone. Absolutely, we think of testosterone as a male hormone, but we all have the same hormones. We just have different levels of hormones. So we need to have testosterone. Testosterone is a fat burning hormone. So the other thing that I hear a lot from my clients is, oh, after menopause, uh, my weight started fluctuating. I feel like my metabolism slowed down. It's because we're starting to lose some of those fat burning hormones and we're getting higher levels of fat storing hormones. Estrogen is a fat storing hormone. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. Um, cortisol is a fat storing hormone. And so we're not balancing out those fat storing hormones with the fat burning hormones. And that's where we see the metabolism change. It's not truly that we're burning less energy in our body it's that our hormones are not functioning at a high enough level. So when we're looking at the androgen and estrogen hormones, it's really important to look at some of those precursors. So things like pregnanolone and DHEA, those are easy ways to naturally boost up your hormone production. Yes, there is bioidentical hormone replacement therapy um, that some people that people opt to use. We love bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. We're big supporters of it. Um, but there are natural ways to increase those hormones, and then there's, you know, hor um, hormone replacement therapy that you can do as well. All of that to say is we want to increase some of those early precursor hormones so we don't turn off the pituitary function. When you start over um, supplementing your hormones, it tells your pituitary in your brain that you don't need hormones anymore, and it stops making those hormones. And then you have to be on hormones for the rest of your life. Whereas if you work on some of those precursors, those early hormones, instead of replacing the later hormones, it's going to increase production in your body. So as you're going through menopause or as you're going through different stages in life, think about how you want your hormones to produce and what you want your long-term goal to be when it comes to hormones and whether you want to be on a replacement therapy for the rest of your life or you want to get into a good optimization with where you're at in your life. Um, so those are some of the things that I think are really important. Now let's jump over to some of the other hormones. So I want to talk about cortisol because that's Nicole's question and that's directly related to adrenals. Cortisol is our stress hormone. It is our fight or flight hormone. It's the hormone that makes us think we're being chased by a tiger even though it's just like a deadline at work or traffic or all of those things. Our body doesn't know the difference. We think we're always being chased by a tiger. Um, and the idea of adrenal fatigue is that we have put so much stress on our body that our body doesn't know how to produce cortisol anymore. It's not producing the right levels of cortisol. So a couple of questions that I would ask Nicole back um, is what type of testing did you have done and did you do cortisol testing? So typically cortisol testing is done through saliva. We want to see it done four to five times throughout the day. Typically you're spitting into a tube because we want to see this nice curve. Ideally, cortisol is highest in the morning, and then it slowly dips down throughout the day, being lowest at night, helping you go to sleep. Um, so with the cortisol, what can a couple of different things can happen. One, we can have that bell curve, but it can be really low, meaning our body's not producing enough cortisol. We can have too much cortisol, meaning we're producing way too much cortisol, and that causes our adrenals to not really be sure whether they should produce more and so it can be too high. That can create the exact same symptoms of fatigue as too little cortisol, which is really interesting why I think testing is so important when you're looking at this. And then the other thing that can happen is cortisol can go up and down throughout the day. So it can be normal in the morning, it can crash in the middle of the day, and then it can pop back up. You can get like a second wind at night, or it can pop up in the middle of the night, making you wake up, making it hard to sleep, hard to stay asleep, things like that. So I saw Nicole took herself off mute. Did you get your, did you do cortisol testing? Just blood. Just blood. Okay, perfect. No, no. So that would be something that I would encourage you as a next step mm -hmm. for your adrenals as you're going through your adrenal healing process is understand <sighs> what your adrenals are actually doing. And I recommend a saliva test. Um, you can do it through LabCorp or Quest if you're working off of like a functional provider that doesn't want to do lab core testing or something, there's a lab called ZRT that does cortisol testing and they'll send you tubes and you'll spit at them, spit into them at certain times a day and it'll give you that actual um, graph of your cortisol level. So that would be a one really important thing, I think, to understand your adrenals, understand what they're doing and understand how to treat them. The other thing that comes in, like you mentioned, is food sensitivities. So 
I talk about food sensitivities as a form of stress in our body. They're a chemical stress, right? So whether we have allergies or sensitivities, those are stress and they create inflammation. Anytime inflammation is higher, it's going to impact our hormones. This is what I say in that communication process of hormone is like the distortion. It's the part of the hormones that's making it hard to hear, right? So that inflammation is coming in there and really distorting everything. So yes, absolutely, your food sensitivities can impact your ability to heal adrenal fatigue. Um, it's important to look at the body as a whole system. We can't look at just one system. We can't just look at hormones and not look at gut health because our digestive system impacts how our body produces hormones. There's a huge connection. In fact, there's an enzyme that's in our gut called beta-glucuronidase. It's my favorite word ever. Um, and that actually causes our body to reabsorb estrogen. So our body creates estrogen, we convert it from testosterone. Then if we have high levels of beta-glucuronidase, this enzyme in our digestive system, in our gut, it reabsorbs the estrogen instead of detoxing it out when we're done with it. So then we get something called estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance can lead to um, weight gain, periods, endometriosis, painful periods, um, mood swings, pretty much everything you can think of, acne, all of those different things. Um, so when we look at the gut, we have to look at how the gut is actually absorbing things. We look at it from a microbiome perspective, which is the good and bad bacteria that's actually determining of the food we eat, how we store it, how we release it as waste. But it's also looking at something called intestinal permeability. And food sensitivities come from intestinal permeability. So yes, you can get food sensitivities later in life because that intestinal permeability allows little tiny micro gaps to happen in your stomach and your intestine lining. Then those food particles get into your bloodstream. The body recognizes those food particles as foreign and sends white blood cells in to attack it. That creates an inflammatory response. That's what creates a food sensitivity. A sensitivity is different than an allergy. Allergy is more like anaphylaxis, rashes, um, throat closing up, things like that. Sensitivities are just an annoying inflammation. But that inflammation starts building over time, and then your check engine lights start going off. I call check engine lights symptoms, right? Those are, that's your body's way of saying, hey, something's wrong. I need you to look into this. So whether it's fatigue, stomach issues, digestive issues, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, um, hormonal issues, weight gain, fatigue, like Nicole was mentioning, all of those things are check engine lights in our body. So absolutely looking at how the digestive system is impacting the hormones, those two systems are like tightly connected. And how our, micro, how our body is absorbing micronutrients from our food impacts how we produce hormones. All of those things have to be interconnected. Um, we also look at other chemical stresses like things like heavy metals, mold toxicity exposure. Um, viruses can cause chemical stresses. I won't talk about the virus we've been dealing with for the last two years, but a big virus that we talk about a lot is mono or Epstein-Barr. There's a lot of people that have chronic Epstein-Barr viruses that can reoccur in their body and can create adrenal fatigue. I mentioned earlier that I have, or it was mentioned earlier that I have Hashimoto's, which is <clears throat> essentially um, an autoimmune condition of thyroid. So most people get diagnosed hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. About 80% of the people who are diagnosed hypothyroid actually have an autoimmune Hashimoto's. It just means that there's two antibodies that attack my thyroid. Your thyroid's a little butterfly gland here in your neck and um, cause it to just not function as well. Well, when I found out that I had thyroid, uh, Hashimoto's, I also found out I had adrenal fatigue. And I found that out because I was working out really, really hard. I was doing high intensity cardio and my body was just bottoming out and I was gaining weight, I was gaining fat. And I was like, there's no way I should be gaining fat at this point. Um, but it was because those, that cortisol and the thyroid is hugely connected. So it sounded like you got a lot of other testing and I don't wanna take too much time to like dive into all the testing. I'm happy to jump on a call with you and we can talk more um, nitty gritty on everything. So I can recommend other specific things that you can ask for, but definitely that's how they're connected. Um, and how you go about healing it really comes down to where all that inflammation is coming from, as well as where those cortisol levels are and how we can naturally increase those cortisol levels. So 
I feel like I've talked for a long time, so I'm going to pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been amazing, Megan. Oh my gosh. And the chat has been blowing up with so many questions and people's input. So I want to address a couple of things. So, um, so first of all, why don't you tell people where they can go? Well, actually, let me start someplace else. Um, if we have a few minutes at the end, we'll try to get to some of the questions. If not, we have a private Facebook group that we're in, okay? So we will take some of these questions over to that private Facebook group. Everybody come join and we can continue this conversation over there. We knew that this would just be a tip of the iceberg today. We know that there is so much to learn in this area. Um, so in addition to going to the Facebook group to get some more information, where else can they connect with you, Megan? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. So I love doing discovery calls. If you can't tell, I'm super passionate about this. I love talking about it. So um, uh, Renee is going to pop a link in the chat, I believe, for me. Um, you can schedule a discovery call with me. Um, it's a free 15 minute phone call for us to just talk about your goals. Um, we are in Colorado. We work primarily in Colorado, but I can help you find somebody wherever you are. So if you're looking for a provider near you, I can help you with that. Um, and I'd love to just answer your questions as much as I can. So definitely jump on my calendar and I'd love to talk more with you. Amazing, Megan, this is so wonderful. Thank you so, so much for, again, for this, for this information today. So we are going to hear from Megan a little bit later on today as well. So hang tight more for that. So next we're going to hear from our sponsor, The Dames. So today we have Macy O'Grady with us, one of our ambassadors. So Macy, come on in and tell us a little bit about The Dames. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna read because this isn't my normal gig. <laughs> As an ambassador, I'm a member and super passionate about The Dames and love being part of the organization. And with Megan being out of town, I'm here in her place. So um, the Dames is an international organization for women running six and seven figure businesses and women in director and above roles of large organizations. We come together locally and globally to link, level up and laugh. And we do collaboration like no other network, which is all true. There's a lot of Dames on here who know that's true. Um, <clears throat> but one of the core philosophies of the Dames is really you can only grow as much professionally as you're willing to grow personally. And what I like to say is your business is only as healthy as you are personally, um, mentally, physically, and of course, hormones come into that. And um, my personal story is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to all of this and going, okay, good, I'm, I'm kind of on the right track. But, um, you know, I started with hormone replacement um, in my late mid forties. Um, and then, um, two years ago I had a hysterectomy and then had to have complete hormone replacement and started off just not really paying attention and started getting really depressed and really depressed actually, and not functioning at my highest level. And I was on hormone replacement, but I just, it's like Megan talked about in the beginning to take be an advocate and learn more and really understand more. And so I really dove in and really tried to just get what is going on in my body. I don't have, you know, ovaries anymore. So how do I, how do I figure out how to be the healthiest version of myself? Um, because it was impacting me personally and professionally. And so a big part of the dames is, is again, just sharing messages like this that all help us become whole, complete, wonderful, amazing women running amazing businesses at our healthiest level. And hormones are such a huge part of that. So thanks for letting me be here. And thanks for letting me step in on Megan's behalf. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and sharing a little bit about the dames as well. Thank you, Macy. All right. So now we're going to move into the A part of our agenda, the authentic conversations. So we are going to be sent into breakout rooms with about four women and you're going to have 12 minutes total in your room. So three minutes each, okay? It's gonna go quick. So as soon as you get into the room, hop in and get started, okay? Um, you'll receive a notification when there's nine minutes left, six minutes left, and three minutes left. And each person can just take a quick minute to introduce themselves. And then we're going to discuss this question. And don't worry, you don't have to write it down. It's going to be in the chat room in a minute, okay? But so what do hormones mean to you? Do you only think about them around periods and pregnancy? 
Uh, do you relate hormones to your libido or do you only think about them in, return, in, in terms of menopause? So how do you think about hormones? How do they relate to your body? Are they affecting you? I'm sure they are, but how are they affecting you? All these types of questions, okay? So again, when you get into your room, make sure you click on the chat button at the bottom of your breakout room and these questions will be there so you remember what to chat about, okay? So please be real, please be vulnerable, okay? I know it might feel kind of weird to get deep with strangers, but our vulnerability is where we find our shared humanity, okay? So also if you're in a place where other people are around and you can't actively talk, please feel free to use the chat function when it's your turn as well, okay? So Renee is gonna send you all into a chat room and we'll see you back here in a little while. Okay, everybody's back. Thanks, guys. I hope you had some amazing conversations. I know that went quick too, right? So, but we have a few minutes right now. So um, I would invite anyone who wants to share a little bit about, you know, what you talked about in your room, uh, maybe take a minute um, just to come off of mute and, uh, and, and take a minute to share. I would like to share. This is Melinda speaking. Melinda Lanier. Hi, Hi there. How are you? Good. Um, a couple of things that I talked about. I'm in mental health and I have, I've always had a pretty large patient base. And one of the things that I noticed in my patients as I was talking um, with uh, Macy and Megan about is we need to do a better job on the clinical end with when ladies have a discussion, especially women, when they're having a discussion about their mental health, we need to start doing a better job of relating some of that to the chemical imbalance when it, in regards to hormones and, and not letting ladies walk away feeling like they're just crazy or they're the only ones who feel like this, or the, this yes. is just how you feel because you're a woman. This is how you're supposed to feel. And it's not how you're supposed to feel. So we do need, you know, medical professionals like the Megans out there that we can refer mm -hmm women to to say I need you to get the proper testing because you're a woman I need you to get the proper testing just because you feel like this I need and our testing should be very specific based on you know like we were talking you know have you died it before do you not you know what does your body look like what have you tried before what kind of issues are you having in your life our testing could be very different it shouldn't be so cookie cutter with us ladies so I'm very thankful for medical professionals like the Megans who we need more of so we can refer our patients to them to get better care. That is amazing, amazing insight, Melinda. Thank you so much. I know I, I see some people raising their hands up there. It's such good insight. Maybe you and Megan can even have another conversation to see kind of like mm -hmm. what the next steps are for that. So, oh my gosh, amazing, amazing insight. Thank you so much for sharing. So we have about another 30 seconds or so. Would anybody else like to take themselves off mute and just do a little share? I just feel like, <clears throat> I'm Emily, hi. Um, I felt like too, like dealing with migraines was possibly hormone related now that I'm in menopause and I don't deal with them so much anymore. Would have been really great if someone would have taught me about hormones and how that could possibly be a related issue 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like we need earlier education around this stuff yes. so we can advocate more for ourselves. Uh, Megan just put in hormones and migraines are very connected. Yeah, so may maybe Megan, we can do a little something over in the Facebook group around, around that as well. So thank you guys so, so much for, for having such wonderful, authentic conversations and for taking a minute to, to, to share a little bit here too. So in just a minute, Megan's gonna come back with us and she's going to share her top tips for how we can L, live this out into our lives starting tomorrow, right? But before we get to that, over the next week, um, you're going to receive a few emails from me inviting you to sign up for next month's Embrace the Shift that will be all about menopause, right? So we are touching on hormones this month and menopause next month. Um, I'll be inviting you to our Facebook group and uh, Renee's actually going to drop the link for that into the chat in case you want to get a head start and uh, request to join that right away. Um, 
I'll be inviting you to further connect with Megan, our speaker today as well, to get a few different emails from that. And finally, I've mentioned the Embrace Your Beauty Project for Fierce and Fabulous Women over 40 a few times. So you'll get some information on that as well in case you're interested. We are booking for 2023 and I'd love to have you a part of it if you're interested. So, okay, Megan. So take yourself off mute and what are your tips for living, you know, living this out into our lives starting now? Perfect. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, I feel like this has been the theme tonight. But number one, be your own advocate. Um, we talked a lot about it in our breakout room. And I think as women, we have to be our own advocate. We are taught to just let these symptoms be part of our life and they don't have to be. So you need to be your own advocate with your providers um, and really don't settle. Um, don't settle for symptoms. The symptoms that we experience on a daily basis are typically preventable or fixable. You don't have to live with symptoms, so please don't settle and know that there's always hope and you can always um, find solutions. Um, there's a great um, author that um, I'm going to drop in the chat and I'll also pop it in the um, Facebook group as well. Um, it's called Beyond the Pill. Um, Dr. Jolene Brighton. She has written the most comprehensive book on hormones I've ever written or I've ever read. I wish I was that smart and wrote it first, but she did it before I could. So um, I recommend her. She also has a ton of social media. So if you want to continue learning about this so you can be your own advocate, definitely follow her. And then the last thing is I'm going to share a link to questions to ask. So when you go in and talk to your provider, um, I've got a whole list of questions you can ask. Um, so Renee, if you want to pop, perfect, thank you, you're so great. Um, if you want to um, know what you need to ask for people, um, there are all kinds of questions in there and I really hope they're useful. And then I will definitely jump into the Facebook group and answer any other questions that I missed tonight. Amazing. And so if you're not, you know, if you're not getting to the links in time to get stuff, we're going to put all of the stuff into the Facebook group as well. Like Megan just said, um, we're going to try to take your chat questions over to the Facebook group as well. Um, we still have about three minutes. Um, are there any chat questions? Megan, do you want to just review any real quick? Are there any that you maybe want to just take a few minutes to answer? Absolutely. I will try and scroll really quickly. Well, definitely the migraines know, question that came, <laughs> that came up. Um, yes, migraines are very much connected to hormones, uh, specifically estrogen. So if you or your children or daughters are having migraines, um, definitely look into having um, migraines tested or hormones tested. Um, there's very commonly uh, cyclical. Um, so looking at balancing that out, it can have to do with progesterone, too much testosterone or too much estrogen. So definitely looking into that was one that I saw quickly. Um, trying to scroll really fast. There were so many great questions. Um, there was a question about synth like food changing dietary, so going gluten-free and dairy-free and how it's not working as well as they had hoped. So there might be more to the story. Um, you may be needing to look a little bit deeper into overall gut health. Um, it may take more time than just changing those dietary things. Um, yes, I, uh, generally speaking, food in the United States versus food in other countries is different. I could get on a whole nother soapbox about nutrition, um, which I won't go into. Um, but sometimes we have to remove some inflammatory foods and gluten and dairy tend to be two of the biggest ones. Um, but really working to heal the gut um, simultaneously while you're removing those foods is really important because if you just remove them but don't heal the gut, then it's going to continue to be an issue and you're going to get different sensitivities. Um, so those are the quick ones I saw. <laughs> awesome. We have about one more minute for, for any you know, final question. Does anybody want to come off and, and ask a quick question? Vanessa. Yeah, Megan, I love this. By the way, thank you so much. So thorough, clear. I have learned a ton, 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 ton. And I've actually just done all of my panels for food sensitivities, hormones, and blood work this week. Like 12 vials were taken out of me. My arm had nothing left in it. So <laughs> wow. um, I am curious. I definitely, Hashimoto's was, was diagnosed a couple of years ago. When you say healing the gut, I'm just curious, you know, and I know that that's a big topic, but kind of what does that look like? Yeah. So one, that intestinal permeability or leaky gut that we hear about in the media, right? We want to heal that intestinal permeability. If we don't heal that intestinal permeability, we're going to have constantly have gut issues coming back around. We can't properly detox um, and, and that inflammation continuous 
is, is continuous. The other thing is looking at the microbiome. So we have two equal armies, good bacteria, bad bacteria. We want them to be equal so they neutralize each other. Rarely is that happened in our day and age because of stress and food and all the things that we put into our body. Um, but ultimately, when those bacteria are not balanced, we get overgrowth or underabundance of certain bacteria, and it affects how we process food and how we absorb vitamins and minerals. So our micronutrients that allow our body to produce hormones, balance hormones, recover inflammation. So you want to look at the microbiome and really work on correcting the microbiome, getting it as balanced as possible. So probiotics, yes, the right probiotics. You don't necessarily always need all the yogurts and things because we have a lot of that lactobacillus in our diet. You might need different types of probiotics. Um, you want to get rid of any bad bacteria, and then you want to heal that intestinal permeability in a really short sense. <laughs> Right. I'm sure there's still a lot more to talk about in terms of that too, but it was a question that I had too. So thank you for asking that, Vanessa. All right, you guys, like I said, I know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I know there's so much more to learn. So please go join us in our Facebook group. We'll, we'll continue the conversation with Megan. Feel free to put some questions in there. Megan will be popping in over the next few weeks to answer them as possible. Thank you guys so, so much for joining us here today. I hope you'll join us next month again in July for our big talk on menopause. Have a great night and I'll see you all next month. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everyone. Bye.